Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into one of the most important parts of any internal combustion engine, the crankshaft. It's the backbone of the engine, the part that transforms combustion into usable power. We'll explore its purpose, construction, and different types. Stick around, because by the end of this video, you'll understand why the crankshaft truly is the heart of the engine's rotating assembly. So what exactly does a crankshaft do? Power from the expanding gases in the combustion chamber is delivered through the piston, piston pin, and connecting rod. That force is then applied to the crankshaft throw, the offset section of the crankshaft, which converts the piston's up and down motion into rotational torque. The stroke of the engine is determined by the distance between the center line of the connecting rod bearing journal and the center line of the crankshaft's main bearing journal. Multiply that distance by two, and you have the engine stroke. The crankshaft rotates in the engine block, supported by main bearing journals. These are paired with main bearings that let the crankshaft spin freely with minimal wear. The number of main bearings depends on the engine design. For example, most inline four-cylinder and V8 engines use five main bearings, striking a good balance between strength and cost. Inline six-cylinder engines, being longer, often require seven bearings to prevent bending under stress. Some V6 engines, however, manage with just four bearings, which helps reduce weight and minimize friction. Next, we have the rod bearing journals, also known as crank pins. These are offset from the crankshaft's center line. The connecting rod attaches here with insert type bearings. Crankshaft journals need to be extremely smooth. They're polished to around 10 to 20 micro inches roughness average, which helps minimize friction and wear. To increase durability and extend the service life of crankshafts, manufacturers harden the journal surfaces using different methods. One common approach is case hardening, where carbon is added to the outer surface, giving the journals a tough, wear-resistant layer while keeping the core strong and ductile. Another widely used method is nitriding in which the component is heated in ammonia gas, allowing nitrogen to diffuse into the surface and form extremely hard nitrides that resist wear and fatigue. A variation of this process is tough riding, originally developed by General Motors, which involves treating the journals in a molten cyanide salt bath to achieve a similar hardening effect. These processes are crucial in ensuring that crankshafts withstand continuous friction, high loads, and prolonged use without premature failure. The crankshaft is also carefully drilled with oil passages that allow engine oil to flow from the main bearing grooves to the connecting rod bearings. As the crankshaft rotates, the oil forms a thin hydrodynamic film between the bearing surfaces, which prevents direct metal-to-metal -metal contact and supports the heavy loads placed on the bearings. Some of this oil escapes through small spit or bleed holes in the connecting rods, while the rest leaks out from the bearing edges. The escaping oil is thrown around inside the engine, where it helps lubricate other parts. For example, some of the oil is directed onto the camshaft lobes, while other portions splash onto the cylinder walls to lubricate the pistons and rings. However, Drilling oil holes into the crankshaft creates areas where stress could concentrate and potentially weaken the metal. To reduce this risk, the holes are carefully positioned in low-stress areas of the crankshaft, and their edges are chamfered and smoothed to relieve stress concentration as much as possible. This careful design ensures that the crankshaft remains both strong and well-lubricated. At the very rear of the crankshaft, we find two critical features the rear main seal surface, a smooth, polished section where the rear crankshaft seal sits. This prevents oil leaks at the back of the engine and the flywheel flange, the mounting surface for the flywheel or flex plate. The flywheel bolts here to transfer power to the transmission and, in manual cars, provides a friction surface for the clutch. The flange must be perfectly machined and balanced because it's directly involved in transmitting torque. At the front of the crankshaft is the crank snout. This extends out of the block and serves several roles. One, it drives the timing gears or chains, which keep the camshaft in sync. Two, 
It provides mounting for pulleys that drive accessories like the alternator, water pump, and power steering. Keyways are machined into the snout, ensuring that gears and pulleys remain properly aligned and cannot slip under load. Crankshafts use counterweights to stay balanced, and these can be cast, forged, or machined directly into the crankshaft. When counterweights are placed on both sides of each connecting rod journal, the crankshaft is called fully counterweight. This design runs very smoothly and lasts longer, but it is heavier and more expensive to make. To save weight and allow engines to accelerate faster, most manufacturers avoid fully counterweight designs. However, even crankshafts without full counterweights are still carefully balanced to run properly. Finally, crankshafts can be balanced. Most crankshaft balancing is done during manufacture. Holes are drilled in the counterweight to lighten and improve balance. Sometimes these holes are drilled after the crankshaft is installed in the engine. Some manufacturers are able to control casting quality so closely that counterweight machining for balancing is not necessary. Now let's take a closer look at how crankshafts are actually made because not all crankshafts are created equal. There are three main types, forged, cast, and billet. Each has its own strengths, weaknesses, and applications. First, forged crankshafts. These are the strongest and most durable. They're made by pressing hot steel through heavy forging dies, gradually shaping the metal into a crankshaft blank. The process aligns the metal's grain with the areas of highest stress, making the part extremely tough. Most forged cranks use steels like SAE 4340 and are common in high-performance or heavy-duty engines. They do cost more, but the payoff is strength and reliability under extreme loads. Next, cast crankshafts. These are the most common in everyday production vehicles. They're made from steel, nodular iron, or malleable iron. The big advantage here is cost. Casting allows the crankshaft to be formed very close to its final shape, even with complicated counterweights, so only light machining is needed. The grain structure in a cast crank is random but uniform, which helps it handle loads from multiple directions. Because the metal is lighter and less dense than forged steel, cast cranks often use larger counterweights for balance. For most vehicles, they're more than strong enough and far more affordable. Finally, billet crankshafts. These are the top tier. A billet crank is carved out a solid piece of high-grade forged steel, typically SAE 4340. The machining process creates an incredibly precise and uniform part with excellent stiffness and durability. This is why billet cranks are the go-to choice for racing and extreme performance applications. The trade-off is cost. They're expensive due to the material itself, the amount of machining required, and the additional heat treatment needed. So, the crankshaft is far more than just a chunk of metal. It's carefully engineered to handle massive forces, convert piston motion into usable torque, balance the engine, and survive thousands of miles under stress. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button, subscribe for more deep technical dives, and let me know in the comments which engine part you'd like to see covered next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.